You've probably seen it more than once, a speaker getting bogged down or hopelessly careening off track during a Q&A session. But that doesn't have to be the case for you and your next talk. A Q&A session that gets bogged down in off-topic tangents or technical issues is a real squandered opportunity to not only connect with your audience, but answer the questions that are most concerning to them. When handled with a little finesse, a Q&A session is a wonderful opportunity to double down on that audience connection, to answer the, the most concerning questions and points of interest for your audience, and to win over those that still need just a little bit more persuasion to your message. So if you'd like to be a pro when it comes to handling Q&A, then be ready to follow these six principles. Now, two of these principles are design elements that you're going to incorporate into your Q&A before you even step foot on stage. And then we have four guiding principles that you can use when you're actually facilitating that Q&A, and we'll call those delivery elements. Now, I can't emphasize this point enough when it comes to preparation. The more effort you put into the design of your talk and your Q&A session, the more present you'll be when you're speaking and the more you can focus on the delivery of your message. Incorporate these two design elements into the preparation for your talk and Q&A session. Number one, have two prepared questions of your own ready to go in case there are none from the audience. So when Q&A opens up and there's quiet, there's nobody asking any questions, that's when you're going to jump in with a very interesting question, something that your audience is going to be curious about, and you're going to answer that question. Now you need to make sure that whatever question that you bring up, that it's aligned with the internal curiosity of your audience. They have to get value. Now, once you do this, what will happen is the audience members will start to really appreciate the value of the answers you're giving, and they'll have their own follow-up questions. Well, how do you make sure that the questions that you bring up are ones that your audience will be interested in? Well, that comes down to your preparation and understanding your audience, but you could also borrow from questions you've been asked previously in other Q&A sessions or from people that represent those in your audience. A great way to introduce the question is to say something like, I'm usually asked, or one thing you might still be wondering about is, or the biggest question I've been asked over the last three months, or by industry leaders is, and then insert your question. Nobody wants to miss out. So if you can frame your question as something that's going to be valuable to your audience, they'll pay attention. And here's a second design element that you want to incorporate into your preparation. Make a brief second closing of your presentation at the end of the Q&A session. It's very important that you leave your audience satisfied and with clarity. Now, there's no need to return to your PowerPoint if you are using a PowerPoint during the main part of your talk, but you can take a couple of highlights from the Q&A session, tie them back to the key message of your talk, or tie it back to the call to action that you have for your audience. So many times I've seen speakers at the end of their Q&A session just say, well, are there any more questions? No? All right. Well, thank you very much. Remember, your Q&A session is still a part of your talk. Okay, so those two design elements will be very helpful for your next Q&A session. Now let's talk about four guiding principles or delivery elements that will make all the difference in how well your Q&A goes over. Number one, repeat or paraphrase low volume questions. This is for the benefit of larger audiences or in situations where perhaps there's a technical difficulty, where microphones are not working for those asking questions in the audience. We want to repeat or paraphrase those questions. 
Now, when we do that, uh, there's a chance that we might occasionally get hostile questions. We might be asked something like, why did Tesla drop the ball on the timeline for the release of full self-driving? Drop the ball has a negative connotation. There's a, a negative emotional charge. So what we want to do in those situations is strip the question of all of the negative emotion, all that negative charge, and rephrase it in a more neutral way when we repeat it for the audience. So we might say, why did the timeline for the release of full self-driving suffer some setbacks? You see, we strip it of that negative charge. And this is a way that we can take control of the flow of the information that we're delivering and how we answer the question. Number two, give full attention to the question at hand. That means looking at the person who's asking the question initially and pausing before answering. Now you might think, oh no, I can't pause. I can't have this silence. But you're not pausing as long as you think, typically. And really, what does a pause say? It says that you're earnestly thinking, right? You're being authentic by doing that. Steve Jobs uh, did this multiple times in presentations where he had Q&A. And there's a great example in some footage from a conference in 1997 where essentially Steve Jobs responds to an insult. And he does a great job of pausing and reframing. You can please some of the people some of the time, but one of the hardest things when you're trying to affect change is that people like this gentleman are right in some areas. I'm sure that there are some things Open Doc does, probably even more that I'm not familiar with. Delivery element number three. Make eye contact with the questioner as you start your answer and then give your attention to the broader audience. So it's important that you return to engaging the entire group as you continue with your answer because even though one person asks the question, the answer is valuable to the entire audience or many people in the audience. Politicians do this at town hall meetings. Bernie Sanders and John McCain are great examples of politicians who do that. If despite your best diplomatic efforts, Iran attacks Israel, would you be willing to commit U.S. troops in support and defense of Israel, or would you wait on approval from the U.N. Security Council? Well, thank you, Terry, and thank you for your service to the country. I want to say everything I ever learned about leadership, I learned from a chief petty officer, and I thank you. And I thank you, my friend. Thanks for serving. Um, let, let, let me say that we obviously would not wait for the United Nations Security Council. I think the realities are that both Russia and China would... Uh... And delivery element number four, keep answers concise. You know, what exactly is the audience member asking you? A strong, concise answer is extremely satisfying to an audience. Are they asking for a number or a figure? Are they asking for an opinion, a clarification, an explanation? If you can give a concise, powerful answer, this is a great opportunity to build strong rapport with your audience. Okay, so let's review our key design elements and delivery elements, and I'll give you an opportunity to take a couple of screenshots that you can review later as you prepare for your Q&A. So with these tips, you have everything you need to deliver Q&A sessions that your audience will love, that will position you as a trustworthy authority, and will be memorable and impactful for your audience. Thanks again for liking, commenting, and subscribing, and for supporting us in our mission to help good speakers get to great, and great speakers get to brilliant. <laughs>